So, uh, five years at Ar Arcon now, and uh, currently you're heading the pre-sales division. Can you give us an idea of what you do at Arcon? So, um, my journey with Arcon started as a project manager. Again, uh, um, at times you think you are good at something, and you only want to do that because you want to come out, uh, you know, uh, as a as a guy who who does the job that he has been asked to do in the in the best possible way. So I started off as a project manager, and this is why I believe it, it's it's always important to have a mentor in your boss or in your leader. Right. And uh, Anil plays this role wonderfully well. Anil saw me doing all the projects, and he always had this one thing to, to for me uh, for me that uh, you doing a good job does not make me happy. You getting people to do a good job would make me happy because then I would only have one yaya. When you do a good job, I only have one yaya to do a good job for me. Right. But once you start getting people to do a good job for you, I've got multiple yahyas doing multiple good jobs for me. So he was the one who thought that, you know what, currently, so at that time, back in 2016, Arcon did not have a pre-sales function. And pre-sales for any software solutions product company is a very, very important role to have. I mean, you've got SMEs, you've got the best brains there who are a mixture of product, business, functional, consulting, and everything else. Uh, back in those days, we used to have the sales and the implementation, the delivery teams filling up that void, uh, trying to bridge that gap between sale, the, the sales, the pre-sales and the post-sales. Uh, with me on board, Anil said that, I, I think you could be a good fit there. Why don't you try and run this? And that's how, and I think I was doing I, I didn't realize this because when you are doing something, you get so engrossed in doing what you're doing, sure. you forget about what are you doing. But then for a person who's looking at you, sees what you're doing and is able to then make a call that, you know what, if you do it in a, in a specific way, you'd be able to do wonders. And that's what Anil did. Anil said that if you, if you start this pre-sales function and give it a try and let's see. Anyways, the company needs it. Um, we, at that time for Arcon 2016, we were trying to go mainstream. Uh, we were trying to. We were. We were all guns blazing in terms of making the world know that we, as an Indian startup, uh, I wouldn't call us a startup even then. But then the world looked at us as a startup. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that the the world knew that Arcon existed. We had a good number of customers in the Middle East. We had good presence in Middle East. We had very good presence in India. We were looking at regions that we that were untapped for us and pre-sales would have taken us to those places and that's how pre-sales happened and uh, that's how things started working out. Sure. We started building and putting a team together and now we've got a, a full-blown function. Absolutely. So, uh, now you're a person who knows about the products in and out from A to I would Z. Say, yeah. Tell us about Arcon, uh, Arcon's products and uh, how are they different from your competitors? Um, the first thing that comes to mind when I look at Arcon, um, I would like to call myself, I would like to call myself, mm -hmm. again, uh, this is me passing a judgment on myself. I would like to look at myself as a guy who understands the requirement, understands mm -hmm. the technology. It doesn't matter which OEM is it coming from. In fact, a lot of time in the job we do, mm -hmm. we have to talk as security advisors, as sure. consultants. I'm not even representing Arcon. There are those small phases of a mm -hmm. sales cycle where you can't even be talking about Arcon. You have to talk about security because what we're trying to sell you is security. You're not trying True. to sell you Arcon. True. So what stands out when you talk about Arcon compared to competition is simplicity. I think we Indians... We love to complicate things. No, no, no. I, while we love to complicate things, but at the same time, we come out with these solutions which are which are so easy to implement. I remember, so when, when I was in college, I, and I know it's just a, it's just a story, it's, there's, there's no truth to it, but uh, back in the 60s and 70s, the, the United States and the USSR would always be uh, locking horns with each other, and this whole space race. I used to be a fan of astronomy. I mean, I, I used to love reading about space and satellites and everything that's there in the space. And both the US and USSR were trying to be the first ones to be in the space. And there was this one story which said that uh, because people were being sent into space and they had to write, write their observations down, the United Sp States spent millions and billions of dollars trying to figure out a pen which could write in zero gravity. Mm -hmm. And then you had the USSR who sent their astronauts with pencils. <laughs> so sure. this thing and... E so 
so these were the these are the words at times which stay with you so even today when i'm when i'm talking to a customer i don't we, and i the fact is that i see that in the organization while i would have said that i'm the guy who tries to uncomplicate things i am now working for an organization which builds solutions which try to uncomplicate things of course every every security vendor out there in the world is going to try and tell you that you know what our security is like the next big thing and it has so much of complexity put into it and there you have got arcon who says we are here to uncomplicate things for you sure. so this is what i believe and this is and i have seen the customers raise their eyebrows when i tell them that i've come to you with a solution which of course has its own complexity but then the complexity stays with the solution i'm here to uncomplicate things for you, for you. Exactly. Sure. And that's what customers love about sure. Arcon. So tell us about uh, Arcon's products. Okay, so now we have got a bunch of solutions. The flagship product is Privileged Access Management Solution. If I had to say one word about what Privileged Access Management Solution is, it's about making sure, so the, the problem statement is who watches the watchman? I'm putting a guy who's responsible for my security, but what if that guy gets compromised? Right. Who is going to watch that watchman? That's what Privileged Access Management Solution does for you. And I think Arcon, again, has built a very nice story around how solutions should be deployed. See, a lot the, the, the reason why the security, the cybersecurity industry is growing at a pace that it's growing is because a lot of people did not know about the importance of cybersecurity. True. People knew how important is it to have a good business team. People know about how important is it to have good servers, good computers, good people. But you forget about how important is it for you to have good cybersecurity because all it takes for one external actor is to pull one plug and all your good work's gone. And you'd see this, right? Today, the, the attacks that happen, not everybody's after the money. Of course, money remains to be the number one uh, influencer for people to... It's a center stage for Absolutely. Everything. But True. then you've got these online communities, these uh, these groups, mm -hmm. who, who say that we've got nothing to do with money. We're just here to make a statement. Mm -hmm. We're going to pull the corporates down because we enjoy doing it. So we're not getting anything out of it. So a lot of organizations, and, and I think in the Western world, you would see it's not only the, the money-making businesses who have realized it, even your public businesses have realized it. And that's why I used to always wonder that why would a university want to implement cybersecurity solutions? Right. What, does a secu what, a, what does a university have to lose? But they look at even the personal information as important things. For them, it's to secure the personal information is also a task to be achieved. So that's what the privileged access management solution does. So we're making sure that the most, uh, the key actors in any organizations who are generally the the administrators, the C-level executives, the infiltrators are always behind these guys. If I break into a, a regular business user's workstation, I might get information worth $10. But if I get into a CXO's yeah. workstation, I'm, I would have all the trade secrets of the organization up for grabs. So that's what Privileged Access Management Solution does. Then we're still saying that if I want to build a strong security solution, I have to look at the weakest link. Yeah, because you're as strong as you weakest. Exactly. And that's when our, that's where Arcon came out with an EPM solution, which was the endpoint privilege management. Yeah. Any organization, you've, you've got a C-level executive, he would not have 10 machines to work on. He would probably have one machine, two machines, top three machines. Yeah. So you're trying to secure three machines. Any organization, whatever business they're into, they would run servers. Their servers would run into hundreds, 200s, 300s, 500. There's a limit. But if you look at the workforce that they have, you would have 10,000 employees, you would have 20,000 employees. Every employee at least has one endpoint that he or she uses. That would give me at least some information. If I'm able to compromise all these endpoints, which are the weakest link, I'm able to still get a lot of information. In fact, these would be the initial doors that I would have to breach, the initial gates that I would have to breach to go deeper into any network. That's what the endpoint privilege management solution does. Again, we looked at the industry. And we said that while everybody is coming out with endpoint privilege management, can we not add some flavors of user behavior into it? Now, if you see the way the cybersecurity industry is shaping, a lot of, uh, lot, of, uh, lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of machine learning, a lot of user behavior, you'd have solutions being written on user behavior. It's difficult for an admin to sit down and create all the policies on day one. I, I, can't, I can't guess what a user can do. But when a user does something wrong, I want that to be stopped. Can you write a policy for this? You can't. So you have to rely on the user's behavior. You have to rely on the solutions, artificial intelligence. That's what Arcon has done with the EPM solution. 
built a layer of UV around it. So yeah. what you're also saying is that the threat is not just external, but it could also be internal. In fact, the bigger threat is the internal threat. Trust <laughs> is the biggest vulnerability. This is this is one fancy thing that I've heard in the last two years. Yeah. Trust is the biggest vulnerability. When you talk about vulnerabilities, people talk about weak firewalls, people talk about weak policies. I'm saying that the trust the moment I say I'm going to trust this individual and of course we don't want to create a notion in organizations that you cannot trust your employees that's definitely not what we're trying to say but we're saying that when you have to look at security you have to look at security only it has to be looked objectively absolutely so this is what the EPM UBA does we have got a security compliance manager uh, Archon with its DNA to always do something out of the box um, Last year, due to COVID, when the lockdowns happened, a lot of people had to work remotely. So some of our customers reached out to us saying that we are using your solutions. Could you give us something which could also address my current need to have remote employees? When you allow people to connect to your environment remotely, you have to make sure that your policies are right. You have to make sure that your doors are properly secured and only the authorized people are allowed in. When you have physical security, when you're people letting into your office, you still have physical security. You can have somebody check their ID cards. But allowing people in remotely you've got identity. You're blind. exactly you don't know the the user behind the the human user mm -hmm. behind that user id password could be a friend of of an employee True. could be somebody who has stolen the credentials so these customers reached out to us and we were able to put our team together and build a solution which works seamlessly and customers so i think that is one of the biggest success stories for archon in the year 2020 which you did remotely? Absolutely, absolutely, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, remote was the most used word in 2020, yeah. and, and we had to have something which could, uh, which could deliver things. A remote solution which could deliver remotely. Correct, yeah. correct. How do you think uh, PAM, the Privilege Access Management, will evolve over time? Good question. In fact, I say this to a lot of customers. If you look at, so security is so not everybody looks at security the same way across the globe right. you've got certain markets which are very mature the example that i gave you uh, you would never see a university in india unfortunately yeah. implementing a cyber security solution because for them we don't deal with confidential sensitive inform exactly information. sensitive <laughs> so, confidential information true. so the way security is looked at by people varies from region to region Sim the same thing has happened with privileged access management solution. Initially, when s the, the person who would have coined this thought of why should I have a privileged access management solution did not even look at it as a privileged access management solution. He looked at it, or that individual, I wouldn't say he, uh, the individual looked at it as a requirement to secure the keys, right. the keys that secure your gates. Who is securing those keys? Right. They looked at it as a vaulting solution. Then the focus shifted from the keys to the human users. I said in my organization, I've got 500 employees, but then there are five people who are the administrators who have got access to all the doors. Right. So there has to be a solution which works for these five users. And the initial term that was coined was privileged user management. Right. So because the focus was on the human user. But as the industry progressed, you had this business model where you don't even have to have your own administrators. You could just simply render an administrative service from a service provider. Okay. You don't have to invest money into buying, getting ad administrators and then you pay them. You could just simply okay. have a TCS or a Wipro or somebody offering you remote administration as a service. Then people understood that it's not only, because, and then you've got Wipro who's got 500 employees and every day it's a different guy working for you but the job is getting done so you cannot identify every human user right because there's a pool of 500 people so it's not about the user it's the identity the server that guy the server that that guy is accessing there's an account on that server which gets him the access i need to secure it there could be 500 users behind it but it's that one administrator account it's that one root account which is important for me to be secured that's where the privileged user management solution evolved to be called a privileged identity management solution now you, you're calling it privileged access management solution. Why? Because we're not concerned about who the user is. Yeah. We're not concerned about what the identity is. You have a job in hand which needs to be done. Yeah. It could be done by Yahya, it could be done by Roshan. Yeah. 
the identity on the device could be an admin identity, it could be a root identity, it could be a read-only identity. Right. I just want to make sure that Roshan or Yahya have enough access to perform their job and get that job done. Need to know, need to do basis. Right. So that's how the privileged access management solutions have evolved. But I think even today, um, there are, there's a lot of policying that needs to be done, which is still a major thing to be addressed. On day one, you don't know what policies would work for you. A lot of time, the, the way projects are being run, we run these solutions in learning mode, where the solution learns the behavior. So as, as this progresses, you would see a lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of machine learning, a lot of uh, deep learning, a lot of uh, behavior analysis is going to take up, where the solutions would become lightweight in terms of the administration that you do. See, again, when I put a PAM solution, you still have to have administrators administering the PAM solution. What if these administrators get compromised? So it's all, the question always remains the same, that who watches the watchman? I've got a watchman looking after my main gate. Who watches him? I've got a watchman who's looking after my data center. I have to have somebody who is also watching that administrator. Yeah. So that's how I see this evolving. A lot of automation, a lot of machine learning, a lot of artificial intelligence is going to drive right. how so PAM as we know it as uh, today mm -hmm. is definitely not going to be the same maybe in a Absolutely. year or two years. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, uh, so since 2016, a lot of uh, enterprises have started their cloud journey. Right. I think since 2015, 16, people have understood. The way I said mm -hmm. that for me to get an administrator working for me is a cost to the organization. There's a long cycle for me to go out, hire people, bring them in, train them, and then make them profitable for me. Similarly, organizations are moving away from traditional on-premise data centers. Of course, you would have banks, you would have uh, government entities who would still be skeptical about putting their information on the cloud. But businesses are understanding that if you want to have availability, imagine you're running an on-prem data center which gets compromised. You don't have a backup. If you put this on cloud, cloud natively would give you redundancy, would give you re resiliency, which will ensure that your business does not get affected because you've had a breach or you've had an incident. So people are realizing this and we have seen uh, the, the engagements that I would have with prospects would be all about only securing the on-prem data centers. Now, the very first question that I get is, can your solution run on the cloud? Can your solution secure my cloud workloads? So we're seeing this, right? So the PAM solution, even in these four or five years, we have made sure that we can work with cloud workloads, we can integrate with cloud workloads, I can support natively the cloud technologies, and only then would people be interested in buying my solution, yeah. True, true.